Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. I haven't seen you guys in a while. How are you? Doing fine? Yeah, good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we go. We stay in health with the COVID pandemic. Okay, great. So, hello again. Welcome to Ilmu Kebidanan dan Kemajiran Podcast. I'm Nida Nazira Binti Japri from Group 6. We'll accompany you on this podcast episode with the title Pregnancy Pathology. Of course, I'm not alone. There's Nor Maisara Binti Abdul Rashid. Hi. And there's Nor Nadira Binti Rahmat. Hello. Hello. Okay, without wasting time, let's just discuss our topic. So our topic is related to pregnancy pathology. Based on our literature, there are 10 types of pregnancy pathology, which are molar, fetal mummification, fetal maceration, superfecundation, superfetation, pseudo-pregnancy, wandering, ectopic, hydramions, and abortion. But on today's podcast, we will only talk five types, which are molar, fetal mummification, fetal maceration, superfecundation, and superfetation. While the other more, we will talk on the next podcast. Okay, a simple understanding of pregnancy pathology. It is um, basically a pathology related to pregnancy and childbirth. On the first type, I will talk about MOLA. MOLA is a state of disability or abnormality of embryo, which can be categorized when the embryo dies and disintegrates at the age of very young or in early pregnancy. In addition, is when the placenta continues to grow and develop well, even though the shape is not normal. Oh, so like how many types of MOLA are there? So there are... Uh, four types of mola that we should know, which are mola cystica, mola hydatidosa, mola villosa, and mola sanguinolenta. I will explain one by one. So mola cystica is where the placenta continue to grow and develop uh, from the cystic cyst, while the ad- outer placenta is formed mm-hmm. irregularly. While mola hydatidosa, haida- mola as we can see, um, at the picture, um, it appears like grape-like shape that occurs due to the match on the chorion, which can interfere with the surrounding tissue due to due to progressive growth. Like it is like translucent bulbous in the terminal villi. Villi. Okay. Okay. Next is molar villosa. Is an overdeveloped development of the chorion while the molar sanguinolenta is the uh, when the embryo is dyed with the bleeding slightly show pale blood color so it looked like a flash that can be called as molar carnosa i think that's the simplest way to explain the types of molar oh wow so that's molar now i'm curious um how do we diagnose molar okay good question why, Sarah? For now, it's still hard to diagnose MOLA, but can yeah, by doing laparotomy and endoscopy. By this, we can detect the shape of the MOLA. Okay, now we move on on the next type. What is it? Does anybody know? So, is it the mummification? Yes, you got it. So, I just brief a little bit about mummification, okay? So, to simplify, to simplify it is one gestational uh, accident that happens due to fetal death in the uterus. So, usually it happens at four to six months of pregnancy. Now, for the diagnosis, it is generally uncomplicated, usually trans uh, rectal palpation and also ultrasonographic examination uh, would show the mummified fetus as a compact, firm and immobile. So, in an ultrasound examination, usually there is no heartbeat. So, from that, we know the fetus has been mummified. But for general physical examination, usually appears normal. However, sometimes decreased milk production and also weight loss could be also be as the clinical signs. Oh, but is there any possibility that it could be an infection to the mother or maternal? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it could be, but in rare cases only. So the mother could experience severe blood loss or maybe infection in the wound. 
uh, but these are all rare complications. Oh yeah, also, do you guys know that there will be changes to the maternal and also mummified fetus if it is retained or maybe stayed in the womb longer? Do you guys know that? No, really? Yes. Like, like, like what kind of changes? Okay, okay, okay. So I'll tell you guys. So after the fetus dies, the mother's amniotic and also an allantoid fluid is resolved, right? So cause the dehydration of the fetal tissue and also membrane. And eventually, the carunctals will also disappear during dehydration. Uh, from the screen, this, this is the mummified uh, fetus condition in early mummification. But when the fetus stay long womb, it will be like this. God. Yes, that can get right. So it will be drier, firmer, and also the fetal tissue would so, some sort like leathery texture. Yes, interesting. Oh, okay, okay. It is interesting. Like, do you happen to read about the treatment therapy? Like, how to fix it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I came through with it before. So, yeah, abortion is the final therapy. So, to abort, I've read uh, estrogen hormone could be given maybe 20 to 30 mg of steel bestrol and also 15 milligram oxytocin 24 hours after that. Also could use uh, 15 to 25 milligram postaglandin. Ah, uh, okay, okay. How about cat, dog or maybe pig? Do they also have this fetal mummification issue? Uh, okay, okay, okay. So for cat or dog, it is sporadic which means um, it occurs in irregular intervals or only in a few places. But in pig, it is actually the important cause of prenatal lo losses. So the fetus will die during 40 to 90 hours pregnancy, then mummification happens, and then mummified fetus will expel together with live fetus during parturition. So I've read also in horse, it happens to twin fetus and also in sheep, it happened to one or both fetus in twin pregnancy. So yeah, I guess that's it. So do you guys have other question about mummification? Um, I think no for now. You, you already explained all. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think I know a bit like more about mummification. Oh, all right. So um, I've heard that maceration is also a common disease in cattle, but I'm not sure what it is. Do you guys know about it? Yes, I have read about it and now I'm, I am going to share with you guys. So the fetal maceration is the disintegration of a fetus that has died after the formation of the fetal bone, which is after four months of pregnancy in cattle, which has failed to abort, although the service opened. So fetal maceration may occur at any stage of gestation and has been reported may occur in all species following fetal death, regression of copulation and fetal abortion. As you, as you can see the picture from, from Thormi, yeah, that's so like the fetal maceration. Oh, may I know what is the cause of this disease? Well, what I read is like a complete abortion after the third month of gestation is the main reason for a retained fetal bony mass mass in the uterus cows and buffaloes. Not only that, the reason for it is because the reason for the non-delivery of a dead fetus could be a partially dilated cervix or the abnormal presentation of a fairly dry fetus which causes it to be retained in the uterus. Conditions like trichro trichomoniasis, trichomoniasis and vibrosis, maceration which is associated with uterine torsion during gestation. Oh, that's really terrible. Like, how does uh, this happen actually? From what I found is like with the dead fetus, which is incubated at a body temperature, like the bacteria will multiply, is very rapid, and the fetus which putrefies. Initially, it becomes distended with gas and it subsequently decomposes. The wall of the uterus becomes thick and surrounds the instigating fetus like a capsule, as if the wall of an abscess. Consequently, the cow does not display severe systemic illness. As, as if to, after about third month of gestation, fetal bones resist maceration. The, so the sharp pointed bone, which is like a fetal ribs or anything that is sharp, may deeply embed, embed themselves in the uterine, uterine wall. Occasionally, a bone perforates the uterine wall becomes encapsulated by excision. Oh, I want to know, how do we uh, diagnose this? Huh? 
by to diagnosis usually readily made by trust rectal palpation the ter the uterus will feels like a thick wall and firm like fluctuation is largely absent and in advanced cases crepitation of the fetal bones can be felt there is usually also a slight purulent vaginal discharge also it can be diagnosed by the history finding of a piece of bone lodged in the cervix rectal palpation which is uh, like there's a free fatal bones palpable in the crepitative parts and the heat thick uterine wall and then you also have to do radiography which is more in small animals and ultrasonography which is finding for hyper echogenic scatter bones in echogenic or non-echogenic fluid with echogenic floating parts and sonography and probable findings during the present case were which similar to previously described finding characteristic to fatal maceration Oh, now we know about the fetal maceration. But I'm curious, how about the uh, superfecundation? My Sarah, would you mind explaining that? Oh, yes, sure, sure. So, okay, superfecundation. Um, from the word super, we know it must be more than two, can? So, it is a condition where there are twins from ovulation on the same day, but with two different fathers. So two separate eggs is released and fertilized by two spermatozoa from two different males during the same menstrual cycle, usually less than 24 hours of ovulation. So this is also common in dogs, pigs and cats, for example. Eh? In cats, sometimes we see there is a mixture of orange and maybe tabby cat, uh, but the father is black and mother don't even have a spot of orange color. So then we wonder from where the kittens got the orange color. So yes, that is called super fecundation where the kittens have more than one feather. You guys clear about this? Oh, no, <laughs> no wonder my cat were like that. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, same. My neighbor's cat also like that. Thank you la, my, like, for explaining this. Yes, no problem. Yes, thank you, Mai. Now, how about superfetation? I hope I'm not confused with with the uh, superfecundation. It would be nice if we know more about it. If you don't mind, Nadira. Superfetation is a reproductive phenomenon that is said to occur when an animal shows signs of atrus and is mated during pregnancy so that a secondary pregnancy occurs in addition to the previous one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, at least two fetuses resulting from the different ovulation, ovulation cycles and conception time will be present in the uterus at the same time. How does this occur? It can be what I thought there are three, which is or one is ovulation must be triggered with pregnancy, which is for, for ovulation to occur with pregnancy, the complete follicular development and maturation must be, take place. And ovulation with pregnancy is more or less excluded in species that have a large astrocycle than the mean pregnancy length. It has long been assumed in reproductive biology that the presence of an active copulative, which is copulated during pregnancy, impedes follicle growth and ovulation. The second one is the semen must be at the place of fertilizer in the oviduct. Uh, are there any requirements needed for this to happen? Yeah, there are two options which that can fulfill this requirement, which either a fertile mating during pregnancy or long-term semen storage in a reproductive tract. So in mammals, insemination results in the transmission of similar factors that act in the female reproductive tract, reproductive tract to promote sperm survival. So condition the female's immune response to tolerate the conceptus and organize molecular and cellular changes in the endometrium that facilitate embryo development and implantation. And the last one, which is the endometrium, must be able to accept blastocysts to start implantation. If one assumes that the finding of different size fetuses is caused by superfetation, then there must have been additional implantations during on an, an ongoing pregnancy. This requires a certain hormonal environment, probably different from the environment in a non-pregnant uterus. Okay, wow, this pregnancy pathology is really complex, yeah? Okay, well, from yes. the podcast, it can be concluded that MOLA is a state of abnormality when the embryo is die at the early pregnancy, which has four types, MOLA stetica, MOLA hydatidosa, MOLA villosa, and MOLA sanguinolenta, while fetal mummification is death of twin fetus. So one fetus is alive, another died in the womb, and be expelled together with the uh, Leaf, leaf, leaf one. Okay. 
While fetal yeah, maceration yeah. is the disintegration of a fetus that has been died after four months of pregnancy in the cattle and has failed to abort even though their cervix is open. And superfecundation yes. is two or more ovum in the same estrus cycle fertilized with more than two male spermatozoa. Lastly is the superfetation, a reproductive phenomenon that occurs when the animal shows uh, signs of estrus and it uh, mated during pregnancy, which makes secondary pregnancy occur. And it seems like uh, we're at the end of our today podcast. Hopefully, it will be useful to the listener of the Ilmu Kebidanan dan Kemajuran Podcast. Greetings from me, Nida. I'm Nisara. I'm Nadira. Assalamualaikum Waalaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.